the 2000s. Ah, okay, hi, this is Miss Linton, and these are my wonderful AP biologists coming in for seventh period review. Say hi. Hi. All right, move it. Okay, um, so we have two chapters review, 31 and 32. Um, also, I want to remind you there is a shadow a lurking. Who is the shadow? The shadow knows. Three. Chapter 3. So you want to make sure you look over that. That's independent review, but it forces you to get ready for your AP exam. Okay, so issues with um, chapter 31, animal organization, but we're focusing on what? Homeostasis. Homeostasis. So though there are wonderful things to be learned all through here, la, la, la. Okay, we are focusing on, 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 I'm continuing, oh, did I pass it? No, I did not. Oh, wait, let's just look at that because that's fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> still going. There was a lot of homeostasis. This is great. This is annoying. Boom. Okay, homeostasis. Okay, now. There could be two graphs that I would do, okay, if I'm talking about homeostasis. Relating to oh, homeostasis, you're trying to keep it at some sort of what? Temperature. Maybe a temperature. If I'm trying to keep a set point, a set point, for a set point, am I going to use negative feedback or positive feedback? Come to a conclusion, like with your bio buddy, make a claim. Negative, 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 or negative feedback has to do with. Um, Okay. So, what kind of feedback would you say this graph is? Negative. Negative feedback. Because we're trying to maintain right about here. So sometimes we're a little above it, sometimes we're a little below it. That would be an example of negative feedback. How would you draw a graph to represent positive feedback? How would you draw a graph? Yeah. Well, how, show me with your hands. Did you go in like this? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, so this would be negative, negative feedback. So you're trying to keep it at a set point. Positive feedback, we just keep amping it up. Positive, up, 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 yes? What would be an example where we saw positive feedback? Um, childbirth. Childbirth, okay, good. All right, what was an example where we saw negative feedback? Body temperature, good. Who are the um, two most important systems in controlling our homeostasis? Who are the most important systems in controlling our homeostasis? Tell me. Cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. Really? Circulatory. Nervous and not excretory. Nervous and endocrine. Nervous and endocrine. Who is the king? Who is the queen? Nervous is king, okay? And um, we are going to talk about how at the hypothalamus um, and the pituitary gland, we're gonna be learning how that's where those two systems can talk to one another. And the nervous system is quick, fast response. The endocrine system is usually a slower, more long-lasting response, all working to maintain homeostasis. And we'll spend time on both of those systems. All the other systems in your body do what? Support those. Support those, contribute to it, right? When we were looking at body temperature regulation or we were looking, let's say, at calcium levels, when we were looking at calcium levels in our blood, we were looking at the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, our bones, our kidneys, okay, the circulatory system. All of those systems were involved in maintaining that homeostasis. But the king and the queen are the nervous and the endocrine system. We focused a little bit of time on temperature, and we had endothermic and ectothermic organisms, okay? So um, why doesn't the person in the blue seat take the endotherm, person in the slate seat, you take the ectotherm? Here, I'll give you some help with that. Go ahead. Here is another name for the same thing. Oh, and then another name would be Yeah, right? 
And Pokey Yoli. Pokey? Thank you. Yeah, what she, what she said? That is the exothermic or the one that got. Good timing, Max. Max, Notre Dame. Max. Nope. Okay, if I'm trying to maintain, I've got maintain my temperature or just go with the environment. Okay, these are my two options. Maintain or go with whatever's in the environment. Which one is going to cost me more energy in the moment? Endo. Maintain or go with? Go with. Which one will cost me more? Maintain. Ma maintaining. I'm fighting the coldness or I'm fighting the hotness, right? That's going to be energetically expensive. However, what does that allow me to do? It allows me to live in many different areas, right? Okay, am I an endotherm or an ectotherm if I'm doing that expensive activity? Endotherm. Okay. Ectotherms, they're going with whatever it is. They choose not to spend energy there. However, the downside, right, that's the benefit is they don't spend the energy, but the cost is what? They can only live in a narrow range of habitats because they can't adjust or maintain a temperature to where their enzymes can function well. Because enzymes are very what? Particular. Yeah, specific. And they work at a particular what? Temperature and pH, right? All those types of things. Putting it all together, putting it all together. All right. Swedish meatballs. Um, we already talked about negative feedback, positive feedback. I'm feeling good about that, so let's just answer this question. 2,000 number number. And then we'll move on to the circulatory system. It's still loading. Some strange person made a comment on our picture today. Which one? The one where I said we're Sweaters? matching, and they but no, nah, don't match. Somebody see you, Anna. If they're being funny, I don't care. But you'll be surprised. I'll just block you from my Instagram. You don't get to see me. I swear to you, Anna. It was Anna. It was at Anna's spam. Does it sound like me? Because she's got nothing but love for us. Hold on, we all find it. We were in two different colors, but it was the same. It was hype. It was. <laughs> it was hype. Some 41. Right there. I got it. Oh, oh my gosh. Like, oh, no, you don't match. Job. Hold on. Yes, oh. right, right, right. Red hot um, chili peppers. Good job. Why did we miss this? Did we not just go over this? We did, actually. Okay. So, um, which of these bot? What's the key word here? Contribute. <laughs> Do you see that? I did. The reason why the, those of you, the 50% who picked C, you were like nervous and endocrine as if they were the only ones, but all systems what? Contribute. I use the word contribute. Okay, so look for those little nuances, all right? Oh, you might not know the answer to this. Maybe you do. You do because you did the respiratory system. Yes, we did. That's easy. Got it. Yep. This guy has like no name or anything that counts. We might need a platform. Producer of things, Los Angeles. I followed him. Did you just block me? Oh, wait. wait no. Yeah, he blocked you. He just blocked me. It's a matter of seconds. They're in this class. They just blocked me. He just blocked me. Okay. See those phones. <laughs> in a matter of seconds, they blocked me. Yeah, this is all recording, if you know that. Yes. I yelled at how many my voice. You still got access? Hit me up, Snowden. Julian Assange. Oh, yeah, like, you know he lives in the Ecuadorian Embassy of London? He lives in that one building. <laughs> no, Julian Assange. He's the guy who kind of regulates. Oh, yeah. He's a stoner. <laughs> I found the kid with me. Oh, he is a stoner. Look at that. <laughs> I forget. How do I block him? Oh, total stone. How do I block him? Oh, we found him, Miss Lindsay. Total stone. Yeah. Done. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Bye, baby. Just picture this kid doing drugs. 
All right. Well, nice try. Good job, Santana, though. Um, what separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal is the diaphragm, your diaphragm, right? Diaphragm. And when we learn in the respiratory system, in order to draw air in for inspiration, the diaphragm has to what? Contract, which makes our um, thoracic cavity what? Larger. So air will go from higher pressure to lower pressure. And we want to get the air back out, the diaphragm relaxes, our external, internal, intercostals come down, make your thoracic cavity smaller, pushes air out. Ask your bio buddy, did you remember that? Yes. These yes. my, okay, yeah, you don't need to know these. Let me just check. Done. Okay, moving on. Okay, so in your notes, now differentiate to the cardiovascular. That's all that is? That's it. Homeostasis. <laughs> yeah. The other part was for what? Support. Support. You're going to need to know it for other systems. Yes. All right, here we go. Here we go. Come back to me. If you are unicellular, what are you going to use for all exchange? Cell membrane. Do you need a circulatory system? No. no. Do you have a large surface area? Yes. Yes, it's going all around your cell. Is it thin? Yes, it's one cell membrane. Is it moist? Yes. I don't want to hear anything. Chances are. Lord, I'm sorry. Um, if, it's, if it's one cell. There's medicine for that. If there's one cell, one cell, okay, um, it's probably sitting in what? Liquid. 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 Yeah, so it's probably moist, okay? Now, <laughs> so there are organisms with and without um, circulatory system. This C anemone, he is a multicellular organism, but he doesn't need a full on system because. He has the outside of his body, right, exposed, and he has a large gastrovascular cavity with water exposed, so it will still just do diffusion, okay, because it's completely exposed on all sides. Then this brought us to this lovely dis um, discussion about the coelom, okay? We remember the outermost layer in embryonic development is referred to as the uh, ectoderm. Innermost layer is the endoderm, endoderm. and the middle layer is the Mesoderm. As you mature and develop, if your mesoderm stays solid with organs kind of jammed in the mesoderm, okay, then you are referred to as being acelomate. Okay, you don't have a body cavity in there. But these types of organisms are very what? Small, flat. Small, flat, thin, right? So for them, though they are multicellular, they're going to be able to do their exchange just through what? Yeah, their outermost surface and their gastrovascular cavity. Their digestive system is going to work for them. They might have, um, like, platyhelminthes. They, and we'll learn about this in the excretory system, but they have these flame cells that move water through their system, but it's their actual systems inside that are doing that, not a body cavity, not a space like a coelom. These two have a body cavity inside. This one's called a pseudocelum, like in roundworms and nematodes. This one is coelomated, like in us or segmented worms. This coelom means that you have a body cavity here that's completely lined, this side and this side, with what kind of germ? Endo. Not endo, endo is your gut tube. Oh. Mesoderm. So you've got a, okay? So to help you think of this, your endoderm, Kane was right here before, okay? Endoderm, I talked about sticking a, 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 a hose down his throat, right? So he has a tube that runs down the middle of his body. That would have been surrounded by endoderm and development, okay? So yes, fluids can move through there, but if we step outside of that, he has another ca cavity, because we're a tube within a tube system, that's called his coelom. It's completely lined with mesoderm. His organs are sitting in that body cavity. Pseudocelomate, it's not completely lined. If you look right here, we have our endoderm layer right here that's gonna be our gut tube, and then this space right here. We have mesoderm on the outermost part of it, but it's not lining to the inside of it, so that's called a pseudocelum. 
chances are if you're coelomated, oftentimes you have a system where fluids are gonna be moving through it, okay? Or, so you can have, um, you can use your gastrovascular cavity, you can use your coelom in order to transport those fluids or your pseudocelum. And the outside is also gonna be exposed potentially to some sort of liquid. So th this uh, Nidaria, this polyp, you know, um, sea anemone, what he's gonna have is he's gonna use his gastrovascular cavity. Here, planaria diffusion, gastrovascular cavity, acelomated. Here, this nematode, he's pseudocelomated. He's gonna use, he's in liquid. He's gonna have the outside exposed to it. And then his body cavity is also gonna have fluid in it. Okay, echinoderms have something very unique to them or echinodermata, it has a water vascular system. It has a way to move fluids through its body. Okay, that's just unique to echinoderms. Now, the fluids we said were two kinds. If you have the fluid called blood, then do you have an open or a closed circulatory system? Closed. closed. The fluid is always staying in your closed circulatory system and it will be called blood, okay? It's not called blood if it spends part of the time in a system of vessels and part of the time out in your body cavity. Then it's called hemolymph. That's not hard to remember because we know about our lymphatic vessels and fluid, our tissue fluid, right? That tissue fluid gets in a lymphatic vessel, it's called lymph, hemo, you might be thinking what? Okay, so <laughs> it's a little mixture of what we would think of blood and what we would think of as interstitial fluid or tissue fluid. So these are your two, okay? This diagram gives you a survey of all the different organisms and the strategy they use. Sac-like body, you're using your gastrovascular cavity. Flat, thin, gastrovascular cavity. Step up, we got some selenic fluid, some hemolymph. Here, annelids have a full-on circulatory system that is closed. Annelids actually have five hearts on either side, so that's a total of? 10, 10, ten hearts, okay? Um, to be a heart, what does our heart do? Pump. Pumps. So they have five of these pumps on either side to keep the blood flowing, okay? Um, you're not, you, you don't need, their focus is not anymore on all the different classifications. So this is here is just a support to show you the variation. Okay, on how you might have adapted to your environment. This you will need to know. Closed and open circulatory system. For sure with me you need to know. Okay, but not that last slide. I don't want you to spend 20 minutes trying to memorize that last slide. Okay. Closed and open. If it's closed, it stays in your blood vessels. If it is open, what? Part of the time in a vessel and part of the time. Yeah, it's in your body cavity. All right, oh, no, I don't care. Okay, um, heart, okay? Now, we know differences, okay? What does an artery have more of than a capillary or a vein? Muscle. Muscle, okay? What does a vein have more than a capillary or an artery? Valves. Valves, give me another thing. What does it have more of? Space, what is that space called in the opening? It starts with an L. Lumen. Lumen. Okay? So, <laughs> veins, right? Veins, they have a larger lumen, okay? And they have valves. Arteries, they have more muscle. Okay? And capillaries are one cell thick and what are they all about exchange what's something else we could say about arteries they're away from the what heart and veins are towards the heart okay can you need a title this with Vein. <laughs> True or false? Artery, arteries always carry oxygenated blood. False. false. Was the definition 
of an artery. We can the heart, whether it has oxygen in it or not. An aorta will have oxygenated blood. Pulmonary arteries will have deoxygenated blood. Of course she's right. No, I need to say this all the time. Okay? What are some things in place to ensure a one-way flow of blood to avoid mixing of blood? Valves. Valves help ensure a one-way flow of blood and no mixing. The fact that we are a four-chambered heart, okay, and the way it passes through our heart, we don't have mixing of blood unless there's a mistake going on. Okay, if you have a three-chambered heart, if you have, you don't have a left and a right ventricle, you just have a ventricle, then you're gonna have mixing of blood. But clearly then your metabolism is not the same, gentlemen, is not, doesn't have the same requirements, right? Okay. So then, um, okay, so you know, we went over that. Arteries, veins, capillaries, good. So now, survey of looking to see different strategies, okay, fish, we have one heart, okay? And it goes, it's going artery, arterial, capillary, arterial, capillary, but it doesn't get another pump again. We have, in fact, let's do our thing. Ready, here we go. Arteries go away from the heart, veins go towards. Arteries, arterials, capillaries in the middle, venules, veins. Heart, body, heart, lungs, heart, systemic, heart, pulmonary, atria, atria, collect, ventricles, pump. Do that part again. Atria, collect, ventricles, pump. Okay, good. All right. Now, it just looked like, it looked like that's what I was doing. All right, come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. They have an atria. They have a ventricle. They're pumping blood to their gill capillaries. What's happening at their gills? They're picking up oxygen. Yeah, that's happening. They're picking up oxygen, and they're getting rid of CO2. They have gills. Their gills are folded like this in an arch. Those arch, if I picked one up, they're a disc-like what? Starts with an L? Lamellae. And the blood and the water are flowing at a counter. No. That was a bad guess. Okay. The blood, the blood and the water are flowing at a counter. Current. All right. So as a result, when the blood has spent a lot of time in the gill, that's when the blood has spent a lot of time in the gill, that's when it's coming in contact with the freshest of water. So it will always favor the diffusion from that fresh water to that blood who's spent a lot of time in the gills, right? If I looked at the blood right behind me, the blood that was here, this blood hasn't spent as much time in the gill, so it doesn't have as much oxygen, but it's not meeting the freshest, freshest of water, so it still favors diffusion. If I'm looking as the water is moving past the gill, it's giving off oxygen, giving off oxygen, giving off oxygen. It's about ready to leave the gill. It has the least amount of oxygen as when it's had the whole time, but this is when it's meeting the blood for the first time, so it's the most deoxygenated blood at that time. So it's getting the worst quality of water, but it needs it the most at this point. That's countercurrent. So that increases efficiency. If we came into the gill, the water and the blood at the same time, I'm at low levels of oxygen, it's at high, that's great, it would facilitate the transfer, but the transfer then would go until we were at what to what? 50-50, and then I wouldn't get any more. So by doing countercurrent, that increases efficiency. Ask your bio buddies, they understand that concept. I actually got that. Okay, come back to me. When you look at the amphibians and the most reptiles, I say it's a step up from the fish, okay? Because here it leaves the gills, it gets no pumpation, and then it goes out to the rest of the body and then comes back, okay? So this isn't very efficient, but what is a fish doing? Just swimming, just keep swimming, right? So it, it works for them. 
okay? But now these animals are on land. How is this a step up? There's more oxygen. We get a pump to the lungs, and then we come back and we get another pump out to the systemic circuit. So it comes back. Here on the, on the gills, uh, or the fish, it goes heart, gills, body, heart. Right? That's how they're working. Heart, gills, body, heart. Okay? For the um, amphibians, it's doing heart, right? And it goes out to the lungs, and then back to the heart, and then out to the body, right? So it comes back for a pump, but the problem is the pump, you can get a little bit of what? Mixing. The blood coming from both places is getting pumped at the same time and squirting out, so you don't have, like, out to your systems getting that pure oxygenated blood. Where we have four chambers, so when you do that, you're going to keep all the blood separated, the oxy from the deoxy. All right, then this brings us to our heart. We know atria, we know ventricles, right? So just real quickly, let's just run through it. What is this? Superior vena cava. cava, what is this? What's this? What's this? What is, how are you gonna remember that? Yeah, good. What's this? And I'm going up through the? Good, now I'm out at the, what's this? Left. Pulmonary, pulmonary artery, and this is my right artery. artery. Then I'm going to go arteries, arterioles, capillaries in the middle. And these capillaries are surrounding the alveoli where they are dropping off what? CO2. CO2. They are picking up what? Oxygen. Coming back in, venules, veins, and then specifically these veins right here. What's this one? Left pulmonary vein and the right pulmonary vein in here. What is this chamber? Left atrium. I'm going down through the. Good. Down into the. Left ventricle, up and out through the semilunar valve, and then the aorta. Which goes here, 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 and also down and around here. Okay? Those arteries, the aorta then branches into arteries, arterioles, capillaries in the middle. Let's discuss that. If those capillaries in the middle are around the heart itself, what circuit is that? Cardiovascular. No. <laughs> Everything I say is. But you know that I love you, right? I know, it's my fault. <laughs> what circuit is it? Don't have a systemic coronary. Around the heart is the coronary circuit. Of the systemic, of the big umbrella systemic, it's the coronary circuit. If it goes to the kidney to get cleaned, it would be called the renal. If it goes around the small intestines and the stomach, it might be picking up what? food, nutrients, or it might be picking up nothing. So then we need to go next to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic portal vein. Why do I want to do that? Because if I'm full of nutrients from the intestines, I need to go to the liver in order to take it down a little bit, store some. If I'm leaving the small intestines and the stomach via the hepatic portal vein headed to the liver and there's no nutrients in there, the liver might put some in. So whenever it leaves the liver, it's always slightly elevated, okay? So that it can meet the nutritional needs or nu yeah, of the rest of the cells in my body. Are you struggling with that? Do you need me to explain that further? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> I have great effort. Okay. Okay. So, if it leaves, here's my left ventricle. Do you agree with that? Let me get a pen. Here's my left ventricle. It's going out my what? Aorta. 
if this branches into an artery that comes back and actually feeds the heart muscle itself, okay, the myocardium, right? If it goes and feeds that heart muscle, that's called the what circuit of the systemic circuit? Coronary circuit. I'm still out in the system. I'm just going to a particular system, the heart, okay? If it goes to the kidney, the word for kidney is renal, okay? If it goes to feed, and remember these drawings are oftentimes drawn poorly, there is an artery that goes and feeds the liver oxygen. That would be called the, starts with an H, hepatic, okay? But I also have this right here. When blood leaves your stomach and small intestines, it could be high in nutrients or it could be low. So I'm gonna shunt this blood, instead of going from the stomach and the small intestines, back to the heart, out, back to the heart, to the lungs, and back to the heart, and then out again, possibly throwing off homeostasis, particularly the osmotic pressure. You know what's happening at the osmotic? Remember the two pressures at the capillaries that are contradictory? Hydrostatic says out, osmotic says in. So if I make my blood super hypertonic from all those nutrients, what's gonna come in? Agua. It's gonna increase my blood volume, which increases my blood pressure, right? So I wanna maintain homeostasis. I don't wanna to give too much sugar to my cells, right? I could go into a shock, right? Who has trouble with that? And the reason they have trouble with it is because they're endocrine system, their pancreas may not be either listening or either generating the insulin, if you have type one diabetes, or it's not listening to insulin if it's type two, your body cells. So it's bad to have too many nutrients out there, your liver's helping you out and storing some. So you will take the blood from your stomach and your small intestines and via the hepatic portal vein, hepatic meaning liver, port, it's a port between the intestines and the liver, it's a vein because now it was truly on its way going back to the heart. It's just making a pit stop at the liver before it goes. Got it? Okay, so it's gonna go here, get the nutrient level regulated before it returns. Questions? Do you get it yet? If you don't, I'll, go, I'll make another run at it. You make sense? Slate, explain it to blue. If it makes sense, Slate, explain it to blue. What's the, what's the importance of the hepatic portal main? In maintenance of homeostasis. God, that would be a great essay question. All right. Now, I don't. Here, here's the dilemma I have as your educator at this moment. Okay. There's questions in here we skipped over. I, I'll go back to those and hit them all, and we can just quickly see if we can answer them. But I want to make sure I get through all the content first. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So as we're reviewing, so we got that. All right. So we hit the circuits. We hit the circuits. Now let's run a little bit too fast. Yeah. Oh, we did that. We did that. We did that. Okay. So let's talk about this. When your heart muscle is contracting, you refer to it as. No. Systolic. systolic or systole, right? And when heart muscle tissue is relaxing, you call it? Diastolic. Right. How are you going to remember that? Diastolic. You die. Relax is too much, you will die, systolic, right? Okay? So we're going to remember that. We're going to remember that the heart sounds are due to the? Love, yeah, that's the name of it. But due to the? Valve doors slamming shut. The AV and then the semilunar. AV semilunar. AV semilunar. Right? So it goes like this. You ready? Atria contract and the ventricles are what? Relaxing, right? Do it with me. So atria are in what? Systole or diastole? Systole. And the ventricles are in what? Diastole. diastole. 
Now, na, 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 na. now the atria are in what? Diastole, and our ventricles are in systole. And when they do this, they're just contracting. They're going to send blood any way they can. We don't want the blood to go back into the atria, do we? No, we want it to go out into arteries, right? Either to the lungs or to the body. So this is what forces the AV valve shut, shut the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve shut. Because what happens is as the heart contracts, it's going to push on these one-way valves. The blood's going to get caught in those like socks of, or I don't know how to parachute of those <laughs> valves, okay? And then it's like those heartstrings are holding on like, oh, don't collapse, oh, don't collapse, right? So that's the first slamming shut here, right? Then the ventricles are going to relax. When the ventricles relax, it's going to suck blood back in. And when it does that part of it, when it sucks the blood back in, that's when it slams the semilunar valves. That's the second sound. So it's atria, look, look, do, look and do, atria, ventricles, then they both relax. Atria, ventricles, atria, ventricles, atria, ventricles. Okay, look, look right here. He's like looking at me, so I want to. Okay. <laughs> Remember the EKG? Watch, P, QRS, T. PQRST. 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 You know where I'm getting that from? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right here, this is the atria contracting, systole atria, okay? QRS, ventricles, right? QRS. Then they both relax, but atria was already relaxing. He's in the QRSness. This is the ventricles relaxing as the T. P Q R S T. P Q R S T. All right. And if it goes like this, we need a what? Defibrillator because we're in fibrillation, and that's when we want it to go. Mm. Relax, reboot. Atria ventricles. Atria ventricles. Big picture, got it? Yes. yes. Okay. So, and this is also, this would be atria, this would be lub, dub. Right? Lub, dub. Okay? All right. Now, who controls how fast we lub, dub? The brain. Where in the brain? Medulla oblongata. <laughs> Say it, medulla oblongata, okay? Now, your pulse is when your arteries what? Expand, why do they come back? They have muscles, okay? So then that makes them snap back, which keeps the blood flowing in the same direction. We know pulmonary and systemic circuit, we've already hit that, right? You feel good about that? AP biomaster. <laughs> we also know when we talk about blood pressure, okay, pressure, it will always go from high pressure to low pressure, much like flow on. And I hope you said that, okay? It's always going to go to high pressure to low pressure. That was period one. Yeah. That she should have ended probably with high pressure to low pressure. Okay. So blood is at its highest pressure when what? when the left and right ventricles are what? Contracting. That's the greatest force on the blood due to the heart, right? Mm -hmm. Lowest at the vena cava, and where else? What is that? Left and right pulmonary veins. Right, anytime you're re-entering the heart, that's when it's gonna be at the lowest pressure. When you're leaving the heart, it's gonna be at the highest pressure, okay? Because blood will always move high pressure to low pressure, okay? Now, as far as speed of the blood, it's gonna be fastest at the closest to the heart, slowest when? At the capillaries. 
because that's when you have the greatest surface area. And the speed of the blood is inversely proportional to the area, surface area that it goes. Okay? Yes? And you can see that in this diagram. What makes blood return in the vein? Why does blood come back? What's the greatest thing that motivates blood to come back to our heart in a vein? Skeletal muscles contracting, pushing on the collapsible walls of the vein. Your pacing's driving me nuts, so it's got to stop, okay? So the skeletal muscle contracting, pushing on the vein wall. What do the veins have in them? Valves. So it's like grabbing a tube of toothpaste, right? When you grab it, it can only squirt in one direction due to those valves. What do we call it if those valves break? Varicose veins. Yeah, they're only called hemorrhoids if they're in your... But, but. <laughs> nice work. I'm sure you meant donkey. <laughs> okay. Last but not least, blood. Okay, blood. Blood. Okay, blood, you have formed elements and you have the... Yeah, what do we call that? Plasma. plasma. Good. What is plasma mostly made out of? Water. Water. Good job. Of the formed elements, what are your formed elements? Red blood cells? White blood cells? Platelets. What are platelets for? Clotting. What are red blood cells for? Oxygen. What are white blood cells? What? Immune. Good. Plasma is mostly water. I'm not even going to put it on the slide. You're going to tell me what's dissolved yes. in plasma. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. We're thinking in our mind what? Road trip. Don't say another word other than road trip. Okay. We are going to stop and get some gas. gas. We could also go in and get some nutrients. nutrients. They might be something salty or proteins. We're going to need to get rid of our nitrogenous waste. Hormones, vitamins. vitamins. See? Got it. Perfect. I see a whole other thing. Max, this is recorded. So. I know. Recorded. Recorded, Max. Okay. Last thing in your notes that you need to know of, you have a battle between two pressures. You already know this battle, right? When you move into the capillary, you have hydrostatic pressure, the length of the capillary, but where is the hydrostatic pressure greatest? At the... Arterial end, lowest at the venule end. You have osmotic pressure, the length of the capillary, but in relationship to the hydrostatic pressure, where it stays about the same, at the arterial end, the hydrostatic pressure is greater, forcing fluids out. At the venule end, it, the osmotic pressure is. I don't, what did I just say? Did I say it backwards? At the arterial end, which pressure wins? Hydrostatic, which makes fluid come out of the capillaries. By the time the blood travels to the venule end, your blood pressure has dropped, the hydrostatic pressure, below the osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure saying to come in recovers the oxygen, uh, recovers the waste and recovers the carbon dioxide. Got it? Okay, so then you have next up here, you have questions embedded through all of this. Okay? So if you want to do the questions, we can click through them. Is there any, if, if you are interested in them, I'm more than welcome, or we can race through, or somebody else can do them. <laughs> questions? You want to do them or no? Yes. Who wants to run them? I'm going to help these boys out real quick. Who run wants it? to run the questions? Run it like Chris Brown. Run it like I do. I think I can do it. I can do it. Do it. Yes. Do it. Do it now. Of course, I, uno momento, you see how I'm, no, not like Chris Brown, he makes poor choices. See how I'm scrolling through and you can find him, and then you can hit the start right here? Okay, okay. you're in charge. It depends on which one they want, ECG, Okay, boys. That's even worse. Okay, there you go. Got it. Who did this? Yeah, I think I know who did this, and they didn't tell me about it. But I'm pretty sure I saw him do it, but they didn't say anything. Interesting. Okay, so let me see. Good job, Nancy. Oh, Shavia. Oh, are we? Oh
Oh my god. Tap it four times. Okay, so the answer was B because capillaries are in the middle. Nice. Okay. The right atrium. The atrium. Okay. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Are you wanting to do a yeah. 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 Yeah.